Hey, welcome to my daily devotions for December the 11th, 2022. We're going to take a look at Hebrews, the sixth chapter, great chapter, Mark chapter 16, the resurrection, the, the end of Mark, Psalm 24, and Isaiah 18. Uh, some great, some great scripture today. Let's pray before we do that. Father, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for the word of God, which is living and active and sharper than a double-edged sword, which gets inside us and changes us and makes us different and new and fresh for the day. Do that with us today. Apply your word to our hearts with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Make us different and better because we've heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sixth chapter of Hebrews. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity not laying again a foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the, in, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal punishment, and God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance, because to their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again, and subjecting him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain after falling on it, that produces a crop useful for those for whom it is farmed receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are confident of better things in your case. Things that accompany salvation. God is not unjust and will not forget your work and your love that you've shown him as you helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end in order that your hope, that your hope, in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater than him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Men swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us that may be encouraged. I'm going to read that again. We have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us. May, may be, we have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor of the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. We get to go behind the curtain into the presence of God with Jesus. And he's back there pleading our case with the Father. Hallelujah. Okay. Then, Mark chapter 16, the end of the Gospel of Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large and had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. He went and she went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping when they heard that Jesus had been that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him they did not believe it afterward Jesus appeared to in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country these returned and reported to the rest but they did not believe them either 
Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven. As they were eating, he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Well, that still needs to be done, okay? Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their, in their, with their hands. They will drink deadly poison. It will not hurt them. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere that the Lord had worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Well, we need to keep that up today, don't we? We need to keep preaching the word to people. That's what this channel is about. Psalm 24. It's another one of those Psalms of David. Man, David blessed us by uh, writing all these Psalms. What a smart dude. Blessed of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it. He, it all belongs to God, the whole, the whole thing. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. A lot of people lifting up their souls to idols. Anything that somebody puts in the place of God in their life is an idol. There's a lot of them going around. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God our his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O, o you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may get, come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. It, ultimately, Jesus is the King of glory. And then Isaiah chapter 18. <clears throat> Woe to the land of whirring wings along the rivers of Cush, which sends envoys by sea in papyrus boats over the water. Go, swift messengers, to all people tall and smooth skinned, to a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. And when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. This is what the Lord says to me. I will remain quiet and will look on from my dwelling place. Like shimmering heat in the sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is gone and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots and pruning knives and cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will all be left to the mountain birds of prey and to the wild animals. The birds will feed on them all summer, the wild animals all winter. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord Almighty from a people tall and smooth skinned, from a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech whose land is divided by rivers. The gifts will be brought to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord Almighty. Wow. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today in these amazing passages of Scripture. Apply them to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us different because we've heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you and have a great, great day.